Hey guys, a very good evening. So in this video, I am going to talk about the strategy for the Naipur JEE examination, in particular for the MSc candidates. Now, if you're not aware of what exactly is the Naipur examination and what is the fellowship, I have made a video on this. Uh, you can check out the link over here and just have an idea of the examination before coming to the strategy and what kind of uh, things you need to understand in order to you know is this examination so like i said this is in particular for the msc candidates because they have no idea as to what exactly is the um, exam about it becomes a little difficult for them to qualify because um you know 60 to um 60 to 70 percent of the examination is from the pharmaceutical background and 30 percent is chemistry yet one can definitely ace the examination okay now how do you do that first we'll talk about our specialization that is chemistry organic chemistry see when you compare it to a pharmaceutical uh, sciences student um, we are at a big advantage when it comes to chemistry okay so the level of the chemistry examination is not that great okay it is like somewhat between iit jam and gate level okay that's what the level of the um, examination is from the organic chemistry point of view okay but there are some very specific topics they ask and of course they are asked in basically like in relation to some pharmaceutical compound as well okay so let's talk about the chemistry first and then i'll tell you about the strategy also so you know that there are approximately not approximately exactly 170 questions uh, which have 85 percent like 85 marks as the weightage so each question carries half a mark right so out of that you can say approximately it depends from year to year but approximately we can say 30 percent of the questions that is approximately 60 60 of the 60 questions okay approximately 60 questions are come from direct organic chemistry okay so now what are the questions that are asked spectroscopy is given a very very high weightage okay now you might think that is like csr examination no it's not like csr because questions on reaction mechanism are very less most of the questions are on spectroscopy and spectroscopy is asked in a lot of detail okay now what exactly is asked in spectroscopy so for example structural elucidation like in csr examination data is given to you and they ask you this data represents which of the four compounds okay that is one typical question then we have questions on dpt right 13 cnmr dpt like dpt uh, 90 dpt 135 dpt 45 those kind of questions um they will definitely come then mass spectrometry you know that isotopic substitution uh, you know, uh, then for example, your McLaughlin arrangement based questions or, uh, you know, they say that, okay, there's a base peak observed at this particular value. So which of the four compounds will, will it be, which will be giving the base peak. So mass, spectros mass spectrometry is asked ext extensively. Okay. So again, I'm repeating, it's not like your CSI examination, v very extensively questions are asked from your spectroscopy. So you have to do it really well. Even in UV's visible spectroscopy, you might have done Woodward-Fisher rule. So questions do come from the Woodward-Fisher rule as well. Okay. Then when you talk about IR spectroscopy and when we talk about NMR spectroscopy. Okay. So in IR and NMR spectroscopy, general questions like you observe in CSR, they might also be asked. Like example, at what value will a carbonyl group, let's say ester, give a IR stretching frequency. But sometimes the question might be, okay, in the molecule ibuprofen, what is the uh, value of the IR stretching frequency? Now, if you don't know what kind of functional groups are present in the ibuprofen molecule, you will not be able to answer that question. Okay, so that is where, you know, you should also have some basic understanding of bioactive compounds, like for example, or pharmaceutical drugs, the common ones like diclofenac, ibuprofen, that, like there are many hundreds of those compounds. They might just ask you any one of them, right? So that's where it gets a little tricky because they might ask you spectroscopy questions based on these very important pharmaceutical drugs. So at least the basic pharmaceutical drugs you should know that what is their structure and uh, what is their utility, like whether they are used in uh, inflammation-based diseases or whether they are used in cancer or whether they are used in diabetes. So this all information you need to know apart from the chemistry, okay? Then we have questions based on coupling reactions, like for example, your Suzuki coupling, um, you know, like so coupling reactions are asked extensively again with the mechanism also. Sometimes they might ask you what is the active catalyst or if we can substitute the palladium with some other catalyst, then which one, which one of the four metals can be substituted, like uh, apart from palladium. So a lot of questions are there from coupling reactions. Like I said, all kinds of coupling, like Sonogo Shira, Heck, Suzuki, Yama, Nigeshi, all kinds of coupling reactions. Then pericyclic and photochemistry, again, it's a part of CSR, but over here it's asked very extensively. Okay, a lot of questions are there from pericyclic and photochemistry. Okay, particularly pericyclic reactions. So you need to do this topic well. And basic stereochemistry, like I said, if you're preparing for CSR and if your stereochemistry is good, you don't need to do anything apart from that because 
the stereochemistry that is asked is very basic rns no nomenclature like r configuration s configuration um they might ask you questions on carbohydrate chemistry like epimers or uh, you know something related to carbohydrate chemistry they might ask in stereochemistry okay um enolate chemistry is very important again your zimmerman traxler model uh, enolate chemistry uh, see whatever topics i'm mentioning over here you have to do them very extensively like i said there are not many questions on name reactions and reaction mechanisms even if they are you would be able easily able to do it if you are preparing for csir like questions like mitsunobu reaction will be there or some other important reagents might be there which we have already done really well okay so we won't struggle in the reaction mechanism part it's just that spectroscopy coupling reactions and pericyclic is asked in a very huge volume so you have to be well prepared for these uh, few topics okay so that is the major uh, you know the major questions are based on this topic and of course there will be questions on reaction mechanism which again like i said i have not written down over here because if you are preparing for csir you will find it really easy that's what i can say or what that's what i've seen when i gave the examination now when you talk about uh, chemistry itself then there's another topic which is analytical techniques so like for example in this analytical techniques mostly the questions will have mostly the questions will be on chromatography okay in the analytical techniques or the questions might be like for example if you have a pharmaceutical compound and you need to isolate the impurities then which technique you will use to isolate the impurities like hplc you should know about a uh, gas chrom gas chromatography you should know about mostly all chromatographic techniques you should be aware of But particularly like i said gas chromatography and uh, hplc is something that you should definitely know of so these are the kind of questions you can see from analytical techniques so this is the major chemistry portion that you will get in the examination like i said it's approximately 30 to 35 percent that is approximately 60 questions see um if you are preparing for csir i'm again repeating it because it's important you should be able to do 90% of the chemistry questions because the pharmaceutical students those who have done their b pharm and m pharm are at a big advantage of course because they have been studying this they know about the drugs and the rest of the 110 questions apart, apart from the 60 questions are mostly based on pharmaceutical sciences so you have to really do well over here to take an advantage the second place where you can do well is aptitude okay that that includes journal knowledge and aptitude both okay so if you can do well in the chemistry section and if your journal knowledge and aptitude is good you can definitely ace the examination see i'll just give you an example of what other kind of questions are asked right because as you have seen in the previous video where i talked about the syllabus so the questions are from chemistry the questions are from natural products the questions are from pharmacoinformatics and the questions are from process chemistry so process chemistry questions are somewhat similar to this reaction mechanism based questions so you don't need to worry about that so pharmacoinformatics and uh, you know and your um, pharmacoinformatics and natural products is something where you might struggle now if you look at the questions uh, uh, from natural products so quite a lot of questions are asked on marine drugs okay so what you can do for this is you can read a lot of review articles are there on marine drugs what are the structures of marine drugs uh, what is their importance what kind of compounds or what kind of drugs have been derived from marine compounds okay that those that were isolated in marine uh, you know uh, wildlife and what kind of drugs were isolated or what, what kind of compounds were isolated which were an inspiration for the various pharmaceutical drugs that is what you should be aware of then the classification of these drugs like for example we, we have talked about terpenes right so how you the, how you classify them into uh, monoterpenes, sesquiterpenes, like that you have to do the classification so this is just one classification there are many other uh, classifications like for example alkaloids okay uh, steroids so those kind of classification based questions also do come in the examination particularly from natural products and then there are questions on uh, questions on biopathways um, those kind of questions do come from natural products so it becomes a little difficult for us, uh, you know, a chemistry student to answer those kind of questions and even to prepare for those kind of questions. Um, then we have questions from pharmacoinformatics. Mostly the questions have to do with QSAR, okay, quant quantitative structure activity relationship. Um, then questions are from pharmacophore mapping, basically molecular modeling, molecular dynamics, molecular docking. Uh, questions can be on the softwares or questions can be there on how you carry out molecular docking. What are the steps required to carry out molecular docking? Uh, what are the softwares that are there in molecular docking like not just molecular docking but whatever techniques i told you over here like molecular dynamics qsar pharmacophore mapping homology modeling so anyone who has experience with pharmacoinformatics or molecular modeling techniques 
will be able to answer those questions otherwise it will become very difficult okay so don't no need to get disappointed just because you will not be able to answer these questions like i said if you can do well in the chemistry section out of those 60 questions if you can get at least 54 right and trust me it's not a difficult job if you are thinking getting 54 questions right out of 60 would be difficult it won't be okay the exam is easy you can definitely do it and you can get at least uh, let's say 20 to 25 questions from gk and aptitude right and a few of the pharmaceutical questions which are again general knowledge based questions okay they are not that difficult like for example they might ask you questions like among the four compounds which like at least 10 of these questions will be there that among the four compounds which is an anti-diabetic drug or among these four compounds which is an anti-cancer drug or among these four compounds which is a anti-inflammatory drug okay so these kind of questions are very general generic questions which if your general knowledge is good you will be able to answer apart from that like i said there are many general knowledge based questions like for example they might ask you um, that uh, which protein is uh, responsible for you know um, ent entry of the coronavirus into the host cell for example the spike protein uh, that is a general knowledge based question they might ask you a question like um, like, uh, like this has been asked previously that where is this ayush that Ayurvedic uh, yoga, Yunani, I think something of that sort, where is that institute established? In which state it is established? So that is a GK based question. Or they might ask you, which is the recently approved um, anti-cancer anti -anti -cancer drug by the US FDA? So the, those are like GK questions. Then questions like World Diabetes Day, when is World AIDS Day, uh, biopharmaceutical classification system, BCS system, uh, what kind of drugs will cross the blood brain barrier? how can you increase its properties pharmacokinetic properties um, then if someone is having cyanide cyanide poisoning that what what kind of a molecule or what kind of a compound you can use to reduce the cyanide poisoning or to get the cyanide out of the system these kind of uh, questions can be there which i believe are general knowledge questions okay or or which is the best pharmaceutical sciences um, institute in india according to the nirf rankings so those kind of questions they might ask in the gk of pharmaceutical sciences and then of course the aptitude based questions which is basically like um you know those uh, like the general csr based questions the aptitude questions like father mother relationship if if son is x age father is this age then what is the age of mother if the two trains are coming towards each other at what time they will cross each other you know those kind of general aptitude based questions will be there so like i said if you are able to do well in the chemistry section and if you are able to do well in the gk and the aptitude section you would definitely be able to do really well in the examination so for natural products you can talk about marine drugs if you have time you can look into the various biosynthetic pathways but more importantly you should know the basic structure or you should know the uh, the name of the compounds okay like for example uh, like what are the basic drugs and what is their use okay what we use on a day-to-day -day basis what are what are those drugs and what is its use and and you should also be aware of uh, the core structures in those drugs for example what is the core molecule that makes that drug important like you will see that uh, one particular functional group or one particular uh, scaffold is there in each and every drug of a particular category. So you should know what is the pathway of that drug. Pathway in the sense like for example if I say a drug is anti-cancer then it can be anti-cancer through multiple mechanisms. Okay like for example a drug can be anti-cancer by inhibiting topoisomerase 2 which is a protein. It might act by some other pathway so you should know what is the pathway for that drug. How is it actually going ahead? and do, go, giving the anti-cancer activity so apart from knowing that it is giving anti-cancer activity what is the pathway these questions are also very important from the exam point of view okay and i would say they come under gk so they are very popular drugs again like i said a popular scaffolds not drugs but like you will see that if you talk about uh, uh, drugs which you use to uh, against hyper hypertension basically to reduce your blood pressure they all have very similar structure so you should know that if they all, all of those drugs, what is their mechanism by which they reduce the hypertension? How do they act and reduce the hypertension? That is what you should know about. So if you can, uh, you know, uh, kind of like do these kind of plus uh, additional questions, then definitely you have a very bright chance of qualifying the examination. Like I said, this time around, the number of seats for the chemical sciences category is the highest that I have ever seen. Okay. 
or in fact Niper has ever seen. I don't think more than 30 seats have ever been advertised by Niper. So this is a very good chance for you to um, bag a seat and like I said the fellowship is really nice. It, it is on time. You don't have to worry about filling the forms again and again. You don't have to wait unlike the CSR and UGC fellowship. It's a very smooth process. And you should also be aware of the basic structure of all amino acids. That is again a very very important factor. Okay, like questions could be there from amino acids, questions could be there from the protecting groups on use that are, that are used in amino acids. Um, questions could also be there on, um, um, you know, on isoelectronic point, Edmund degradation, Sanger's method. So these are the some of the questions that you can you can see in the examination. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please just give this video a big thumbs up and also do share it with your friends because this examination is something that MSc students are not really aware of and it's a very very good examination to get a fellowship and to work in a good institute and pursue research. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video really soon. Take care. I'm teaching live on the Unacademy platform in the CSR UGC net category where I'm taking both the free classes as well as the paid courses. So if you want to get access to the free classes, all you have to do is download the Unacademy app and when joining the CSI UGC net category, you have to use the unlock code that is SETHI. This is absolutely free of cost and you will get access to all my classes. While if you want to take the paid subscription or the plus subscription, there is a subscription fee for that. And if you want some discount on the subscription fee, you can use the referral code SETHI. This will give you 10% discount. On top of that, you will also get access to the my WhatsApp group where I frequently post a lot of updates related to exams and other things. In addition, with the plus subscription, what all benefits you are going to get? Well, you can watch all my sessions. Apart from that, you can watch other sessions that are um, available from other educators in the CSR UGC net category. You will also get a frequent mock test for the examination for your practice and some doubt solving sessions as well. So if you're interested in joining the plus platform, you can definitely check out the free classes first and then take a decision to take the plus classes. Do not forget to use these referral codes. Uh, this will give you a discount for the plus subscription and this code you have to use when you're joining the app to get access to all my free classes.